So what's the setup? Uh, we're all in a prison, you know, and the warden gets there. Hmm? Yeah, close the door. Uh, and we have a certain <laughs> warden, I'm not saying that his name is Tom, uh, oh who decides, well, I'm really sick of these prisoners. I'm sick of you know, I'm a sadistic <laughs> bastard. Let's play a game. What I'm going to do is I'm going to gra gather the prisoners around and then explain to them the game. So I'm going to place a hat on each of their heads. There's some number of colors of hats. Let's just say red and blue. I'm going to place a hat on each of their heads, send them out in a room, and have them guess the color of the hat that I placed on their heads only by being able to look around at the hats on the other people. Now, of course, the rules of this game could change slightly. But of course, I'm going to allow the prisoners to get together and discuss a strategy. Of course, I'll be listening in on it. So if there's a way to beat the strategy. Well, so they're not allowed to talk after they're in the room. Yes. Hats, but like so after the hats are placed, no communication is allowed unless there is communication allowed by the game. And what you'd like to do is like to maximize the number of correct guesses. Because, you know, the warden is a pretty sadistic bastard. He's going to kill anyone who guesses incorrectly. And he's going to let free whoever guesses correctly. But the prisoners kind of get together and they realize, well, there's no real way to, the, to make sure we save any one of us. So what we're going to try to do is optimize the number of correct guesses that can be possible. So let's start out with a really simple, boring example. So let's suppose there are n people and k colors of hats. And what's going to happen is everyone can see everyone else but they're allowed to guess in sequential order. So we're going to guess sequentially. And this is probably a problem that most of you have heard. When we shall play. Um, so everyone can hear all of the guesses made previously. But of course, you don't really know if they live or die. How many people can we guarantee to guess correctly? This is a problem that most of you have heard. Namely, it uses the parity check. Right? Namely, we can save, so we can save n minus 1. Well, how? The first person is essentially going to sacrifice themselves. So anytime that we have k colors of hats, we're just going to assume that they're the integers 1 through k and use a lot of modular arithmetic to do this. So the first player, so if person i, receives uh, color, let's say, C sub i. Well, then the first player guesses well, uh, the sum of C i, i not equal to 1, modulo k. This is a proper guess because he's guessing a hat color on himself, right? But because they're guessing sequentially, Everyone else hears his guess. Now, from that guess, along with being able to see everyone else, they're able to deduce the color of their own hat. Namely, uh, C sub J is going to be equal to, well, let's take the first player's guess, which is the sum of all over all i not equal to 1 of C sub i, minus the sum over all i not equal to 1 or j of c sub i. This is just pure modular, I guess I should be saying, mod k. So player i knows the guess, so he knows this sum. And he can see everyone else's hat color, so he's able to deduce his own color. So every other player guesses correctly. people, we can guarantee to save n minus one of them if we have sequential guessing. Well, why was that? It's because we were able to introduce extra information into the system. Namely, person one in coding theory, this is called a parity check digit. So everyone not only has information about the rest of the code word, but they also have information, some sort of information about what they should be. Namely, I can check the sum modulo k and correct myself to that value. So this is boring because we can do well. 
We know the answer. It's all it's all that. So how can I make the game more interesting? Well, let's remove this extra piece of information. Let's not allow them to guess sequentially, but let's force them to guess simultaneously. so you might have to help me prove some things. But here's the first claim. N people, K, colors and hats, we're going to guess simultaneously. Again, no other uh, communication is allowed. Well, I'm going to claim, so we want to come up with deterministic strategies. I guess this is one thing I should say. So we want deterministic strategies. So there's no randomness. In other words, every person is associated with a function such that upon observing everyone else's hat colors, their guess is determined. So there's no randomness in their guessing. All right? So how well can any deterministic function do in this setting? Well, let's analyze it by just some averaging for a second, you know? When you don't know what to do, expect it back. Kind of rhymes, right? Do, that be, yeah, whatever. So let's uh, imagine uh, fixing uh, a deterministic strategy. expected number of correct guesses? Well, let's calculate. So the expected number of correct guesses is going to be equal to the sum, my equals 1 up to n, of the probability that person i is correct. Just by linearity of expectation. Okay, but these are deterministic so what's the probability that person I is correct if the hat placement is chosen uniformly at random? 1 over k. 1 over k, right? Because what we can imagine is selecting everyone else's hat colors first, except for person I's, and then randomly selecting his, based on the other placement, his guess is determined, so the probability he's correct is 1 over k. So this is equal to the sum i equals 1 up to n, 1 over k, which is equal to n. So by the law of averages, this implies that for every deterministic strategy, there exists a placement of hats um, where less than or equal to the floor of n over k are correct. Correct. Oh, so that's like Yes. Okay. Which we're assuming. The warden overhears any strategy and can do it. So what we want to do is we want to maximize the number of guaranteed correct guesses over any half placement. So we can't do any better than the average. That's too bad. But what's the next natural question to say? Can we do it? Okay. Well, to think about this, let's start with a more simple. Let's just suppose that we have two people. What if we have two people and two colors? So let's say like red and blue. So this averaging argument says that we can never guarantee to save more than one of them with any deterministic strategy. But can we guarantee one correct guess? We say no. I'm going to disagree with you. Okay. So yes, we can. And let's think about this. We have two people. Now, there are essentially four possibilities on how their hats are placed, right? Namely, they both have red, 
they both have blue, this guy has red, this guy has blue, or this guy has blue and this guy has red. So yes, there are four possibilities, but I claim there are really only two possibilities. Namely, they either are wearing the same color or they're wearing different colors. So what's a good strategy? Well, why don't we go to this guy and say, look at him and guess the same color that he's wearing. Now what does the other guy do? He guesses the opposite color. One of them is guaranteed to be correct. Because either they're wearing the same color, in which case this guy is correct, or they're wearing opposite colors, in which case this guy's correct. Fantastic. We've solved the case for two people, two colors of hats. I claim that this can be extrapolated very quickly to get a strategy to say n over 2 for two colors of hats, right? How? Well, for n people, pair them up and run this strategy. This is just in two colors. So now we get, because the same opposite thing only works with two colors, right? Can we do something for more colors, though? I claim that you can still do floor of n over k, for k colors. And to do this, we're going to use some logic over n. It's very similar to the first thing. So here's what we're going to do. So now for k colors. Let's group them together into sets, each of size roughly n over k. So in other words, take a balanced partition. Every group has either floor n over k or ceiling n over k people. Then what we're going to tell to each group is to assume something about the total collection of hats. These guys are going to assume that the sum of the hats is congruent to zero, log k. These guys assume that the sum of the hats is congruent to one log k. These guys, the sum is congruent to two. So on and so forth, the last guy, the sum is congruent to k minus one. <clears throat> so what are you going to guess? You're going to look at everyone else's hat color, use your assumption, and extrapolate what color your hat. Namely, if someone in here sees a sum of 5, they're going to guess whatever hat color gets that sum to be 0 with their own hat. So they're going to guess 0 minus 5 mod k. How many people are correct in this strategy? Floor of n over k. So, are guaranteed to be correct. Simply because one of these groups must all be correct because the sum is actually going to be something log k. Make sense? Fantastic. So in this case, we're able to get the exact answer. Simultaneous guessing n people k colors of hats. We know exactly how many we can save with a, sim with a simple strategy. Note that this strategy seems slightly different, right? But it can be actually phrased in the same way. Namely, there's a different way to describe a similar strategy, slightly different. Namely, what you do is you group everyone into sets of size k, have them only look at each other, and assume that the sum is either congruent to 0, 1, 2, 3, up to k minus 1 inside of that cluster. And that's the nice way to generalize this strategy. So there are a couple of very slightly different strategies that can, that can get the same thing. OK, well, we answered that question. We need a new question. <laughs> What if Tom, I mean the warden, is <coughs> feeling extra difficult and decides, well, I have this labyrinth sitting here, you know, in the middle of CMU's campus, I mean a prison in, in Pennsylvania. Uh, what if I position them at certain places so only some people can see each other and other people can't? 
So this is where we'll introduce the notion of a site graph. So G is a site graph on, say, bracket N. Uh, what this means, it means that I and J can see each other. if I were to have some sort of graph here, <coughs> what does this mean? It means that these two people can look at each other's hats, these two people can look at their hats, but mean, these two guys can't see each other. Do site graphs need to be directed? Or uh, we'll deal with the directed okay. case in a second. So right here I'm going to assume undirected. It's simply saying this is how you can see each other. It doesn't have to be planar, maybe the labyrinth has different levels. I don't know. How well can we do now? So let's just talk about two colors of hats for a second. So let's so make, there's no how they will be placed. In yes, they do. Colors. Yes. Okay. Uh, because their nodes are already labeled, right? So this is one, two, three, four, five. So that's why I say uh, ground set on, on bracket N. So the prisoners are already labeled. interesting to see if they don't know. Uh, my guess is that you could not do well because then you have the, depending on the graph, like certain graphs you could do, you could do just as well. Like if you had a star graph, you'll be able to do just as well as I'm about to say. Okay. So let's do a little definition. Def. Uh, H2 of G, which is called the hat number of G, the two color is the max number of correct guesses guaranteed by any, by any deterministic strategy. Great. So in other words, what we were talking about at first, our uh, earlier example, And the complete graph, everyone can see everyone else. This is what we just argued. Okay. Well, I have a full, uh, let's think about the two colors for instance. For instance. Um, so what's H2 of G? Well, I claim there's something silly we can do using what we had said earlier, right? Namely, the two person strategy. It's an easier way to get the two-person strategy to give you a lower bound. Oh, so if G is a matching? Well, or just the largest matching, right? Okay. So let's do that. So let's let M of G be the max number of edges in a matching If that's the case, we actually have that H2 of G is at least the matching. people up across the edges of this match. Once everyone's paired up, we know that for every single pair we get exactly one correct guess. Can we do any better? So how do I have to show that it's actually equal? You can't do better than a matching number. Well, 
what I have to show is that for any deterministic strategy, there's a way to place the hats such that no more than the matching number are correct. That seems a bit difficult. It's not too bad. So I'm going to use two facts. One is the fact that we said earlier about the complete graph. Okay? That there's always a way to place hats on the complete graph so that no more than floor n over 2p I'm also going to use an extra thing. Namely, uh, we're going to rely on the top version. And if you don't know what this is, that's okay. I barely do, too. So what the top verge formula says is we can calculate the matching number of a graph by just looking at what happens with certain components. So, Let's define. So uh, for u, a subset of the vertices of g, let odd of g minus u, let this be the number of odd components, odd sized components of g minus u. So namely, if I have a graph and I take out a certain set, that's going to leave me with certain connected components, right? And I'm only going to care about the ones that have an odd number of vertices. So what the top verge formula says, and I'll have to read this because I never remember exactly. Top verge tells you that the matching number of a graph is equal to one half the minimum over u subset of v, the size of u, minus the number of odd components of g take away u, plus the total number of vertices of the graph. So it's easy to see that this is an upper bound, namely because um, if I take away a certain set and look at the number of odd components, the number of matching edges I can have in an odd component, there has to be one guy left over that could possibly be paired up with u u minus odd is kind of how many vertices of u are taken up and then the rest of them get paired up. And it turns out there is an equality here between them. So how are we going to use this to come up with a strategy? Well, as the adversary, so fix, well actually we're going to do something, then we're actually going to tell the prisoner some extra information just to make our lives easier. So fix u, subset of v, achieving the minimum. <coughs> so how does this break up our graph? Well, we have our site graph g, we have our set u, and upon removing it, we get a bunch of clusters, we get a bunch of components. Some of them are even, I'll call those e1, e2, through like el, and some of them are odd size, so o1, O2 through like, I don't know, O, M, M, sure. Now, of course, you have, may have some edges to some of these, maybe not others, maybe lots of edges, who knows. But once I remove U, I know that I get some even components, some odd components. And odd of G minus U is exactly M. So M equals odd G minus U. Okay. So, what am I going to do as the adversary? I'm actually going to tell my prisoners a little bit more. I'm going to tell them that I'm going to break up the graph like this before they build their strategy. And in fact, I'm going to tell them that everyone here is blue. Well, that seems silly, right? Now size of you many people already know their color of hats. All right, what else am I going to do? Well, I'm going to use the complete graph strategy. Namely, now that everyone here knows what their hats is, and so does everyone else, the guys who can see someone here, and that doesn't matter, it doesn't help them. So now if I were to remove you, the strategy must operate in the same way, because they get no information from you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to place optimal hat strategies, so place optimal
So by optimize, I mean pretend it's a complete graph and place a hat guess in such that based on their strategy, it's floor of n over 10, at most floor of n over 10. So let's calculate. So, number of correct guesses. is at most the size of u, because everyone's correct on u, plus the sum from i equals 1 up to, I said, l, of the size of ei over 2, plus, that's because these are even components, plus the sum from j equals 1 up to m. Well, these guys are odd sized. Give me an extra minus 1. So here we get size of u plus, well, if I kind of, uh, let's say, plus a half. Now, if I add up all of the evens and the odd components, well, that's all the vertices except for the ones in u, right? So I would get size of v minus size of u, but I also get an extra minus one for each component. So minus odd. Now, if I just pull the u inside, this is one half size of u minus odd plus, which we know is equal to the match by the top root. Awesome. So, two colors of hats, an undirected site graph, we know the answer. Now, there may be lots of different strategies to achieve this, but the easiest one is find the matching of also says you can find a polytime strategy, right? Finding a match in this polytime. It's gross polytime, but you can do it. Great. All right, well, this is only two colors. We'll talk about K colors in a second. But let's first make our site graph slightly more. Tom, I mean, warden, warden person, he's really an extra sadistic and also got a bunch of one-way mirrors to help with the prison. He's gonna add those into our labyrinth. So what if he adds one-way mirrors? Namely, what if the site graph is now direct linear? <coughs> Namely, if I have some u and v, this type of edge means u can see v, but maybe not the other way around. Unless I can have bi-directed edges, right? But an edge pointing just says, I can see your color of hat, but you might not be able to see mine. One way mirrors. Now how well can I do? Just two colors. Let's just again stick to two colors. That's H2 of G. Well, unfortunately, I don't know the answer in this case. But I can give you two bounds, and I can show you that neither of these bounds are correct. <laughs> Counter examples to both of them, one of which is easy, the other one I have to try to reconstruct it and I don't want to. <laughs> but I can show you the graph, I just don't remember the strategy because there's something with like handing notes on it that you can do. So the first thing I can give you is a lower bound. A lower bound of the max number of disjoint dice. By die cycles, I mean a directed cycle, a cycle in the directed sense and not a cycle in the undirected sense. How can you get this as a lower bound? Just don't behave like an asshole the most. Kind of. Yes, but so we have to give a strategy, right? Namely, the lower bound, we could give a strategy if we could show for every die cycle we get one correct guess. So why is that true? What's a strategy? I have a directed cycle, which could be a two cycle, right? Na namely a two cycle. Oh, die cycle. I thought die cycle was referring to two. It's like any sort of cycle. Any, any die cycle. So, so uh, this does count as a die cycle. That is a die cycle. But in general, I mean this. What's a strategy to guarantee one correct guess on this guy? Well, why don't I have this guy guess the opposite color? This guy guess the opposite. Again, remember, we're only two colors here. This guy's opposite, this guy's opposite, 
this guy's opposite, and this guy's the same. This is kind of the natural generalization of what we did with the two cycle, right? We had one guy guess opposite, one guy guess the same. So why does this work? Well, let's suppose without loss of generality, without loss of generality, that guy's hat is red. But he guesses and he's wrong. Then what color must this guy's hat be? Red. Because if it were blue, he would be correct. Okay, but this guy's wrong too. Red. This guy's wrong. Red. This guy's correct. So if every one of the opposites are incorrect, the same is correct. So we're happy. We get one correct guess per die cycle in this sense. And that's why uh, force that they're disjoint in the vertex sense, right? So that means for every one of these die cycles, we get at least we get one. Let's give you an upper bound. Hmm. What, what upper bound do I have? Sorry, give me a second. Okay, uh, the best upper bound I can give you is the minimum over size of u such that u is a subset of the vertices and every die cycle. Uh, intersects you. It's the best upper bound I can give you. So by intersects, I mean just shares a vertex with you. So how do I prove that this is an upper bound? Well, again, I have to show no matter what strategy, I can come up with a placement of hats. So what's true? This condition actually tells me something slightly more. So if u is in that condition, then g take away u is a transitive diagram. Not transitive, it's, it's an acyclic diagram, sorry. Namely, it has no more directed cycles because every single directed cycle had to hit u. So acyclic means that I can actually order the vertices so that every edge points to the left. Okay? So what if there's no die cycle? Uh, then so you, you can't get any. So the upper bound is the... Is yes, the so if there are no die cycles, you can't get any. Yes. Oh, uh, so the upper bound is not valid. No, the, the upper bound is valid. Because it would be zero. Right? If the graph is already a single then the minimum size of u that you have to remove is zero. So you can't get any correct guesses in that case. The condition is that there's no feedback. Yeah, there's no feedback, right? I can see someone else, but like, there's no way to cycle around and force correct guesses, because mm -hmm. there's no extra information added into the system. So, so we'll prove it, and maybe when we prove it, you'll see why this is the case. So here's my u, and here's g minus u. And what we know is that if I look at an edge from g minus u, if I look at this, I can order it so that every single edge that's inside of g minus u points to the left. Because it's acyclic, I can come up with some order. Great. So that means that the only edges that go this way have to come out of u, right? And there are many that could go into u. But all I know is that there's no that. Okay? So what am I going to do? Let's give all of these guys blue. <coughs> so, I'm going to claim that I can force everyone else to be wrong. So, let's look at this first person. He only sees people inside of you, right? So I know what he's gonna guess because I have his strategy. So I give him something else. He's wrong, great because he doesn't see anyone back here, so their hats don't matter. All right, now I go to the next person. He might see that guy, but also only sees guys to his left. All the hats are already placed. I know what he's going to guess. I make him guess wrong. And I continue. This guy only sees people to his left. All those hats are placed. So his guess is fixed. I make him guess wrong. Everyone else is wrong. So this is exactly how you could do it if he was empty, right? Namely, the first guy, he doesn't see anyone, so he just always has to guess the same color because it's deterministic, right? Mm -hmm. So I give him something different, and I just continue down the line. Cool. 
So I can give you these two bounds. Both of them are wrong. Uh, for example, I think the upper bound is easy to show that it's wrong, is consider the triangle, this triangle. So what's the size of the U that intersects every die cycle? It's two, right? But I can only guarantee one correct guess because this is the same as the undirected K3, right? To show that the lower bound that you can do better, I'll give you the graph and leave it to you to, put, to come up with a strategy. So to show that the lower bound you can actually do better than it, I present you with this graph. Where these are five directed edges. So let's first see, what's the max number of disjoint cycles? One. But you can actually get two correct guesses. Based on what you do is you go around the outside and you attempt to get one. And then what you do, so you can do the same opposite, guessing around the outside. So what do you know? Uh, either only one person is correct, or I think you can guarantee that three of them are correct. So what you do is you say either one is correct or three are correct. So the guy in the middle, in the middle, is going to assume that only one is correct and try to, and it'll be the case that if one is correct, then he is correct as well. So a way to do it with some just hand. I remember coming up with it at one point, but I forget, and I don't want to do it. So neither of these bounds are correct. So I pose the question, what's the correct answer for all die graphs? Just with two colors, mind you. Okay, I'm, I'm going quickly, I still have a while. So let's talk about, uh, let's talk about K colors for a second, and then let's, talk a little bit about what these strategies look like. Like how you can talk about optimal strategies. So, how can we generalize these? How can I generalize this lower bound? Well, let's say that again, G is undirected. Um, what's a lower bound on H, K, or G? There's an easy lower bound. max number of disjoint KKs, right? That's the natural generalization of the matching bound, right? We said find a matching, pair up over this edge, you get one correct guess per edge. Well, we know we get one correct guess per clique of size K, right? Namely, do the modulo arithmetic trick inside of that clique. Can you do better? What if I don't have any KKs? Is this the correct answer? What do you think? I don't know. Yeah. yeah I, this is just entirely on a whim, but maybe instead of KKs, like graphs which are critical for having chromatic number K? Oh, I actually don't know. That's an interesting question. Um, So you're saying if you're K-critical, then you also can guarantee one correct guess? With it K colors? I have no idea. That's, that's an interesting question. It could be the I'm case. I'm just throwing a K in. Yeah, yeah, you're throwing, throwing a K. K. <laughs> so I don't know the correct answer here. No clue. But I will tell you one thing. You can definitely do better than this. And I'll give you an example. So you can do better. In fact, I'll, I'll give you a particular graph with no KKs and show that I can get one correct guess. So let G be the following graph. It's going to be a bipartite graph, okay? So complete bipartite, we have every possible edge. One side has size K minus one. The other side has size K to the K to the K minus one. So of course, it has to be at least this large. My guess, you can do much, much better than this, but I was trying to come up with an example where we could have a bipartite graph give at least one correct guess for K colors. And this is what I could do. My guess is you can do much, much better. Hey, how, did, how did that go for this one? All right, let's discuss the strategy, shall we? K colors. So my claim is that H, K, and G is at least one, even though there are no K, Ks. So here's 
what we're going to do, and you'll see where the sizes come from. Let's let C be the collection of all K color names. So let's give these guys some names. This guy is L, this guy is R, the left and the right sides. So again, it's complete by far type, there are no edges inside of the box. So all K colorings of the left hand side. Okay, let's let C do that. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to biject R, we're going to biject it with all functions from C to bracket. So x is going to be mapped to some fx. So in other words, every person gets a function, which is a function that goes from the set of colorings at the left-hand side to a certain hat color, numbers 1 through k. So what's the strategy on the right-hand side? This function to whatever coloring it is, it gives him a it gives him a guess. Okay. But what if no one's right? Then I want to claim that I can construct a strategy on the left hand side that if no one on the right hand side is correct, one of them are correct. So how can we do it? Well, I want to start out with a small claim, a little mini claim. And this is the following. A coloring CR of R. So fix a coloring of the right hand side. And let, uh, let's say just like script C of CR, I don't know, bad, bad notation, equal the set of all uh, CL in C such that uh, no one on the right is correct. So I have some coloring of the right-hand side, and I want to look at all the colorings of the left-hand side so that no one on the right is correct. My claim is that the size of this set is at most k minus 1. All right, I'll prove this in a second after I describe to you the strategy. So everyone on the left-hand side knows what the coloring on the right-hand side is and is able to construct this set. Namely, let's say that c of c sub r is C1, the set C1, C2, up through some C k minus 1. It might not be all k minus 1. Well, if L is the set like P1 through P k minus 1, uh, Pi is just going to guess uh, C uh, the ith position. So in other words, person I is going to look at color at the coloring I and is going to say, well, what would my coloring be in this guy? And going to guess. So one of them must be correct. Okay? Is everyone happy with this? All right, now it just suffices to prove this little mini claim. Well, suppose that C1 through CK are bad colorings of L uh, for the coloring CR. Okay. Well, what is true on the left on the right hand side is I have every single possible function from the set of colorings of the left hand side. So what we know is that there exists some X in R such that um, F sub X of CI is different from xf of cj for all i not equal to j. Simply because there's some function that takes this guy to say color one, this guy to color two, so on and so forth, right? In fact, let's just say that. There exists an x for which f of x of ci equals i, right? For all i. But cr is fixed. 
So we must have been correct in one of these two guesses, right? But x, cr of x, is equal to some color. So there must be one of these that he's actually correct, namely for whatever i that is. And that's not possible, right? Is everyone happy with this? So very convoluted strategy, but it tells you that looking for disjoint kk's is not the right thing to do. My guess, you can do much, much better than this. Hopefully. I would certainly hope so. k to the k to the k minus 1 is big. Don't like that number. All right. We have a few more minutes. Let's talk a little bit about the structure of these strategies. So let's go back to no side graph so everyone can see everyone. So go back to everyone here, to the K of the case. So what I'm going to claim is the following, and I want to give a couple different proofs of it, one of which I think is enlightening for the two-colored case, the other one which is just kind of silly, but it works. So let F be an optimal strategy. Well, I guess f x, x, you know, equals 1 up to n, right? Each person has their own strategy. Uh, an optimal strategy for k colors. What I could ask is if a hat placement is chosen uniformly at random, that a person guesses an individual hat. So the probability that person I guesses color C. So in other words, I can ask, is there any bias? Is any one person more likely to choose red over blue? That's my question. Uh, turns out that no, if we have good divisibility. So in an optimal strategy, so let's do this for k colors and k divides n, then this is exactly 1 over k. There is no bias in choosing one color over another. Seems reasonable, right? Something that should happen. Um, so it's easy to prove just by some conditional probabilities and using the fact that, well, it's an optimal strategy, so I get at least n over k correct guesses, right? So you can use some conditional probabilities. We'll do it if there's time. But I want to prove this and also give a little bit of an allusion to um, some extra structure from the two-color case. So let's talk about the two-color case a little bit. And I want to say that it's equivalent to another problem. Namely, let's let uh, Hn be the Hamming cube. In other words, uh, every single uh, vertex is a 0, 1 vector of length n, and I connect to if they're different in exactly one place. My claim is that any strategy for the two-color case uh, problem on Kn is equivalent to an orientation of the edges of H. So in other words, I go to every edge and I decide to direct that edge in one way or another. Well, why is this? Well, when is there an edge? There, there's an edge in the Hamming cube, so I have one vertex and another. And these are, this guy has something of one, and then something else in position i, some i. And this guy has a 0 in position. <clears throat> yes? That's what our Hamming cube is. Now pretend that I am person i. And I see everyone else's color. That actually points me to an edge of the Hamming graph, the Hamming cube. Namely, I see everyone except for myself, so I know every other bit of this coloring except for my own. 
So I go to this edge, and what does the strategy tell me? It tells me whether to pick red or blue. So namely, if I went that way, I would pick one, which is maybe red, and if it were directed this direction, I would pick zero or blue. So every strategy is equivalent to orienting the Hamming cube. Namely, each person can find an edge of the Hamming cube that they belong to, and then pick whichever edge is at the head of that. Pick whichever vertex is at the head. So these are equivalent. Do you agree? Um, yes. Go through this one more time. I am personal. Right, so HN, HN is just to 2 to the n. Yes. And the graph is just one bit adjacent yes. to. Okay, and so so every strategy. edge is, if they're the same except in position i. One has a 1 in position i, and the other has a 0 in position i. Oh, so I so don't know position i, but I know everything else. That gives me an edge of the Hamming graph, right? Oh, the so it's for ev every coloring is going to... To be a vertex. So yeah, every color is a color vertex with person, 1s and zeros. The person is going to pick... The, well, so yeah, every person so figures out the edge because they know all except for one bit of this mm -hmm. vector. And then the orientation of the edge tells them which one to select. And vice versa, if I have any strategy, I can go to each edge and just ask what would person I pick in this position. So what does this mean? This says that, uh, what are, what's the max number of correct guesses? Well, that's the maximum over, so what is the, sorry. If I give you a strategy, that's an orientation of these edges. So what's the maximum number, what's the number of correct guesses guaranteed? Well, that's the minimum in degree, right? Because the in degree is the number of correct guesses if I'm at that vertex, right? Because those are the number of people that are actually going to say, I think we're in this place. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to orient in this case. So let's prove, so I, I claim that this is easy to prove just by some conditional problems. But I want to prove it by using this equivalence here in the case of k equals 2. <clears throat> so what's in degree? Oh, in degree is a vector. Look at the ones that are pointing to it. That's its in degree. So I look at every vertex and I say, what's the smallest in degree I see? And, what's the, and then I could ask myself, well, what's the best hat placement? Oh, I go to the vertex that has the smallest in degree and I place that hat placement. That's the best strategy for because the number of correct guesses is the number of number of guys pointing to this guy, right? Because everyone else, if I place down that, everyone's going to get an edge, and if it's pointing away, they're going to make an incorrect guess. And if it's pointing toward it, they make a correct guess. Does that make sense? Everyone happy with this? So I'm going to use a little bit of graph theory. So, so suppose, suppose that 2 divides n, for an instance. That's what I claimed. Um, and optimally oriented HN. I want to claim that each person is as likely to guess, um, yeah, I want to claim that each person is just as likely to guess one as they are to guess zero. Okay, which is the same as this. So what does this mean? Well, we're optimally oriented, so that means that every single vertex has exactly n over 2 ins. At most, but exactly because of n2 divides n, right? So 2 divides n tells us that degree in at v equals degree out at v equals n over 2 for every v. So n degree out degree. So there's a famous theorem map dating back hundreds of years. Euler's theorem which says that if I have this condition of a digraph where in degree equals out degree at every vertex, then I can find a so-called Euler trail. I can find a closed circuit that covers ev that visits every edge exactly once in the correct direction. So let's find an Euler circuit. So this is a way to traverse every edge in its correct direction exactly once and wind up back where you start. So I'll, I'll go back to, I don't know, 1500s for the free. I don't know. That's that old. Isn't that old? 717. I don't know when the world existed. Okay. 15 is the old, I guess. Okay. All right. So now let's look at person I. And let's break. 
break up the hand, let's break up HN in the following way. Here I'm going to say that the ith coordinate is here is one. Equals one. And these are the ones where the ith coordinate equals zero. Now there are some edges in here, there are some edges going this way, some edges going that way, between the two of them. We'll note that this edge corresponds to a guess of color i for, uh, sorry, guess of color one for person i. This edge corresponds to a guess of color zero for person i. But I have an Euler trail, uh, sorry, Euler circuit, which means I cover every edge exactly once and wind up back where I started. So the Euler circuit means that the number of ups because the two sides have the same size. So the probability of me guessing one is the same as the probability of me guessing zero for every person. So again, I like this group. And in fact, we can now talk about slightly more complicated versions of the hat guessing game. And I want to use this uh, orientation of the Hamming cube to do it. So let's pretend we're in the, this case. We have three people and two cups. Well, so right away we know that we can't guarantee to save more than one of them, right? And that's optimal. But the warden made a mistake. What was the mistake? Warden forgot to bring enough hats. In particular, he only brought two reds and two blues. So not everyone can be wearing the same color. How many correct guesses? I'm going to guarantee now. Well, let's think about it reason. Let, let's try to think about it by averaging the kind of Let, Let's get an intuition here. Well, one person sees two of the same color, so they automatically know their hat color, right? OK, so we get one correct guess right off the bat. And the other two essentially have a 50% chance of guessing correctly, right? So we might expect there to be two correct guesses possible. No, we can't. <laughs> now you're changing your head. And I want to explain, I, I want to say there are only two strategies at work. And I can prove that with the Hamming cube, but first I want to describe a super simple strategy. Okay? Namely, let's take these three people and just have them all guess the opposite of what they see to their left. I claim this gets two. Why? We're an odd cycle. One color is different than the other two, so there are two switches. So if I look at the sequence between hat colors as I travel these edges, I switch exactly twice, those two people are correct. So I've given you two correct guesses. And I want to claim that this is essentially all you can do. Any strategy is going to look like this or look like the reverse look to your right. Well, how can I prove that? Let's look at our Hamming now. We have three people, so we're looking at the Hamming cube of order three. Oh, oh, I should start labeling my first. Zero, 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 one, one, one. Let's see here. This one will be one, zero, 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 one, zero, 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 one. And I guess this person is 110. I want this person to be 011. And this guy 1. No, do I want that? I want this guy 101. And then 011. Uh, yes. Great. There's my hand. Right? OK. So I know that not all three can be correct. So let's try orienting our graph to give us an optimal strategy. These edges are clearly going to go like this. Because if one person sees the other two people being one, they're automatically going to guess that their hat color is zero, right? It's the best thing to do. No one is correct if guessing that all three are the same. Similarly, these are going to be oriented. So what do I have to do to guarantee two correct guesses? Is I have to make sure that along this inner cycle, everything has in degree exactly one. That's only possible in two ways. Mainly, I orient the cycle going this way, or 
before I orient it going the other way, because it's a cycle. So in fact, every single possible strategy for this problem is essentially the same. It either corresponds to orienting the cycle in the clockwise direction or the anti-clockwise direction. Pretty cool. Let me tell you, I might as well stop there. I mean, I've said a lot of stuff. I don't want to talk about infinite hack guessing games. <laughs> <laughs> Even though they're, they're kind of interesting. But axiom of choice A. Well, oh, I like it. I like the axiom of finite choice. But yeah. I don't know. Uh, questions? About anything? Um, yeah. So, any thoughts on. So, if you're going to try to do this hamming thing for multiple mm -hmm. colors, it's not no. quite like you have like a hypergraph and you're picking yeah, one you, point from every. Yeah, uh, so essentially edge. then it's. Yeah. So that becomes like a selection type process, right? So what, what you'd want to do is, a, is uh, you can describe the K color guy as saying, well, now let's take the Hamming cube with K on an alphabetized K and N letters. Now an edge corresponds to. Yeah, it would be a hyper edge right along any kind of cycle where the mm -hmm. hyper coordinate is different. What you want to say is for each of these edges, I want to pick one of the vertices, which is the correct guess. So what do you want to say is you want to maximize, so you can look at the minimum number of times that any given state is selected, and you want to maximize this number, right? So that would be the natural one. Oh, that doesn't seem easy. Oh. Right? Hypergraphs are hard. Hypergraph land is sat face land. So, but yeah, there is an analog. To prove like that probability that I guess like color C. Did, did you say sat face like sad face? Sad face or? land, but could, uh, yeah, sad oh. face land. That's why they're sad is because it's sad. <laughs> true, true. All right, anything else? But yeah, no, the probability that the that it's one over K, it, it's simple like, conditional yeah. probabilities. Like I don't know how to do it with like an orientation. There's nothing nice about.